Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 477, the Time Zone Back in Time edition. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm David Old, and it is Wednesday morning, the 16th of January 2019, here in sunny Parramatta in New South Wales, Australia. Okay, we have David Old on again. He's in full clerics, and we appreciate that in the program. A lot of people don't get stressed up, and you just, you nailed it with your farmer. Uh, <laughs> I'm really sorry. I just realized when I when I got in this morning that I'm wearing a shirt which may bleed a little bit on the camera. Uh, this is sensible weather here today. It is getting into up to the uh, the high 30s, even 40 degrees Celsius uh, here. It's the it's the height of summer. There's fires burning all over Australia, uh, and things are heating up in many different ways. Yeah, oh, well, indeed, uh, you made the news. Like yeah, great segue. You, you were in the news last week. Your blog, which oh, I'm going to yeah. link to here, and it'll be in the show notes, um, has been exploding. I bet you it's getting slower and slower with all the people reading it. Because uh, the Church of England put out a story announcing a new ambassador to Rome, and you happen to know this person. Before we go there, I wanted to back up and talk about the tenets of faith. Some things in faith are really, 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 really important. Some things, not so much. For me, yes, in my understand, for understanding, uh, off the top of my head, the perpetual virginity of Mary, not that big a deal. You, you know, whether yes, or not you believe right. it, isn't going to get you into heaven or not. Minor, itty little bit of things like maybe the resurrection, big deal, right? You would have thought so, given that it is the central proclamation of the New Testament uh, and, and, and the doctrine that uh, Apostle Paul, for example, says if it's not true, then we believe in vain. Apart from that, yeah. Well, I mean, in my understanding of the resurrection as being a tenet of faith, if there was no resurrection, the entire New Testament from Acts on is a complete lie. All the apostles who were mur and disciples martyred were died in vain. Well, absolutely, uh, they died for um, a good feeling, essentially uh, a, a hope of something more. At, at the most, uh, I, I would say they didn't die for a real, tangible uh, hope. Uh, that is a uh, confidence that there was a life yet to come, and by a life yet to come, a new creation that is a remaking of this world that we live in, uh, equally tangible, just better, not corrupted by sin. That, that is their consistent uh, Christian hope throughout the whole of the scriptures, uh, grounded in the resurrection hope of the Old Testament, uh, coming to fulfillment uh, in, the, in the New Testament. When a, when a Jew in Jesus' day heard the word resurrection, that's what they were looking towards. The magic of the 21st century, in my mind, is video. Okay? Yes. You, you know, video doesn't lie. You can no. edit and stuff like that, but you pretty much, if you're watching a person speaking on video, giving their opinion, it is there, marked, recorded, once and for all. And uh, they can change their opinion, but they can't change the history of what they said in the past. And yes. in as such, we're going to talk about this individual who was uh, named to be an interim uh, ambassador to the Church of Rome, the Vatican, on behalf of the Church of England. You know this guy. His name is John Shepherd. Once again, cool name. If I want, right if I were going to be in in any clergy uh, setting whatsoever, I would want to be named Bishop Love or John Shepherd. You you, you yes, can't you can't uh, you can't beat those. So yeah. so tell me how you ran across John Shepherd in the olden days, like ten years ago. Sure. So um, when I was uh, back, way back when, when I was writing for a, a website people may remember called Stand Firm, doing more stuff on that site than on my own site, um, uh, Dean John Shepherd, who was the Dean of the Cathedral of Perth in Western Australia, which has always been very, very liberal uh, uh, diocese, he was appointed by a man called Peter Carnley, who himself was famous for being quite liberal in his theology uh, uh, too, although doesn't like to be described that way. Um, anyway, so, so John Shepherd, uh, 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 made a number of statements, uh, 2005, 2008, uh, where he basically denied uh, the orthodox understanding of key doctrines such as the atonement and the resurrection. On Good Friday, 2008, 
uh, he released a video that he took in his own study, it looks like, at the deanery in Perth. He wasn't forced to do this. Uh, he wasn't put uh, caught off guard. He sat down and he looked to the camera and he said uh, that Christians need to be protected, rescued, as it were, from this ridiculous notion that Christ rose physically from the grave. Those are his words. He rescued from that notion of physical uh, from the grave. Instead, he sort of used this language about uh, it was it was the feeling of, of those first witnesses uh, that they, they felt the body, uh, but it wasn't actually the physical body, it's, just that, it's their feeling, it's their way of expressing it. Uh, besides, the gospel accounts aren't historical narratives, they can't be trusted in that sense. And look, it was really, really clear what he was saying, there is no physical resurrection. Uh, and he went, uh, as, as liberals will always do, he went to uh, Paul's uh, distinction in 1 Corinthians 15 between uh, the physical uh, body, the suke body, and the pneuma uh, body, the, uh, the spiritual body. And, uh, and he made uh, the great distinction there that liberals will want to do to say, oh, look, it's no longer uh, physical. That's the English translation, by the way. Uh, suke is the, is, the, is the Greek word originally. It's now spiritual. Uh, and the implication being it's some sort of ethereal uh, uh, thing. This is what Jesus' uh, 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 resurrection is. It's actually it's the resurrection of an idea. It's the resurrection of hope. It's um, it's that great, uh, it's that great feeling uh, 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 that it, it could be better. It's the, the concept, up. okay? You, Jesus concept. resurrected, uh, or God, G God resurrected Jesus in concept, and that concept right. allows all the things in the New Testament to be true because we feel that and God felt that. that God didn't true. have the power. God did not really have the power to physically resurrect a dead body. Well, that's the implication. In concept. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Because we know better now. We know this is against the laws of physics. I, I had a little conversation on Facebook with someone I know, a lovely lady, got a lot of time for her, struggles with this concept. She said, look, one of the problems for me is that it just breaks the laws of physics. And I said to her, that's the point. <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> that's Thank the point. God. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. Yes. yes. Uh, smash wide open. Smash wide open. The historical narrative is clear. There was a physical, physical uh, experience of, of the resurrection of Christ by those who encountered him. Uh, but I would want to say super physical. Uh, the article, the Anglican articles put it well. Uh, he took upon him all things attaining to the perfection of, of man's nature. We are now, uh, I don't know about you, Kevin, imperfect, uh, uh, corruptible, mortal. Uh, Jesus took upon himself uh, the, the perfection of that immortal, lives forever, and actually the first fruits of what you and I will become. Thank goodness. Don't know about you, but um, I just got back from the gym. I, I'm fighting a losing battle. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Actually, my New Year's resolution lasted a miracle of six hours this year, which is more oh. than the four hours of last year. Actually, Kevin, more seriously um, than you and I, I was at the hospital last night uh, with, a, with a, a, a lovely lady from our, from mm -hmm. our church family who has uh, just faithfully served others for many, many years. And she uh, is now lying in her bed. Cancer has, has taken her. Uh, whether she has a day or a week, we don't know. It's that kind of stage. And, and you know what? Uh, she and I rejoiced uh, that Jesus is coming back and he will raise her. Uh, I, I imagine in a couple of weeks' time, I will, I will, I will stand at her graveside, uh, and I will, uh, I will uh, pray as she's put down her coffin's put down into the grave, and I will pray and point people to the clear hope that she, I, and you, and all those who trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, will be raised with, with new bodies to enjoy the physical, tangible new creation. Amen. Amen. All right. So we've covered resurrection, and. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you talked a little bit about the the video that uh, John Shepherd did. Um, why do you think Canterbury, uh, the Church of England, decided that this is the guy to be an interim representative to Rome? Uh, look, I can't get inside the mind of of of, of Justin, uh, and and one thing we don't know is quite where the decision was made. Uh, I imagine there was a huge number of pieces of paper that crossed Justin's desk every day. Uh, sure. I, I kind of I feel it feels a little bit to, to me like sort of you know the the West Wing where the president has things just put in front of him and uh, and he, he just signed them. I mean the TV show, not not the reality at the moment. Uh, that is ethereal. Um, uh, but um, it, it feels to me that way. Uh, and so he he takes the advice he's given. So somebody somewhere thought this was a good idea. 
And actually, as I've argued in, in, in one piece of mine, uh, there clearly was no due diligence properly done. They say that their words were, we did due diligence. Uh, the reality is, uh, even a brief little uh, scurry around would have, would have raised the issue uh, that this guy is controversial. Uh, his local newspaper, uh, no, no friend of orthodoxy. He is, uh, you know, they love a conflict story, uh, but they, they, they recognize it for what it is. He is a controversial cleric. Um, and that should have been very, very clear and should have rung alarm bells. Uh, it should have rung alarm bells for Welby if he was made aware of it. And he should have asked the question, frankly. Should have rung alarm bells for those doing, 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 doing the work. But here's the thing as well, Kevin, I want to say. Should have rung alarm bells for John Shepard himself. When I, when I was interviewed for the position I'm in right now, um, I said to uh, the gentleman interviewing me, my, my now boss, I said, look, I'd love to do this job, but I, I just want to make sure you're aware. I write stuff on the Internet. Sometimes people don't like me for it. You might be associated with it. I just let him know that that was coming, and I gave him fair warning and allowed him to make an assessment for himself of whether he was comfortable with that um, or not. Uh, and I think John Shepard owed it to Justin Welby not to put him in this embarrassing position. But there again, if you are a man who is happy to essentially deny the, the constitution of the organization that you're in, which is effectively what's going on uh, in Australia, Constitution of the Anglican Church of Australia is very clear. The 39 Articles are our standard of doctrine. Um, John Shepard clearly does not believe Article 4 of the, of the 39 Articles. He clearly doesn't believe it. it, it it's, it's palpably clear. Happy, happy to state that to the camera and have it go public. Uh, it's very obvious he doesn't believe that in, in the sense that it's meant. Uh, if, if, but if he's happy to do that, then he probably thought there was no problem with this as well. I think that's the thing that we need to keep seeing. They just don't get there's a problem here. They just think, oh, this is just another expression of Christianity, which is another way of doing it. Uh, and the fact that, that nobody in the history of the church has ever really believed this way um, see, until... Well, you yeah, know, that tells me, uh, David, that you're probably ready for Indaba. Okay? Whether uh, or not... Resurrection is really that important to the life of Christianity when we know that we can change our minds as a church on uh, sexuality and stuff like that, now gender. Uh, maybe it's time that we have a sit down and, and, and talk and talk and talk until you change your mind because the Church you know, of England is not changing their mind. You know, Kevin, it's really interesting. I remember that debate um, five, maybe even ten years ago now where evangelicals were, and I think quite rightly, were challenged on the fact that we spoke about the cross all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet we didn't talk about the resurrection much. And actually, I think that forced a number of us uh, to go back and just say, actually, yeah, do you know what? Yeah, yeah you're right. The resurrection is actually a, a key core constituent of, 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 of our soteriology and, and of our future hope. Uh, for our eschatology, for our thinking of what's yet to come and how that impacts now, it, it's absolutely critical. Uh, so here we are being really firm, saying actually the resurrection is really, really important and being clear on what it actually means is is, 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 is really, really important. And so look, when someone comes along in a senior position is appointed to it, and, and, and again, I want to use this word clearly, again and again and again, clearly does not believe the orthodox belief in the, in, in, in the way it's always been believed. And then I think what's really interesting is use this language to try and avoid being seen to be saying no to something and saying yes. So I, I wrote a piece last night when Shepard put out his, um, his explanatory uh, statement, and I've called it. Do I look fat in this? So, so Kevin, you're you're a husband. Well, you're a husband. but I I, I want to cover this in fairness. John Shepard yes. heard the yeah. complaints. Obviously, yes. some people called and said, "You better look at David Bol Old's blog." And he didn't say who. He knew who you were, and uh, yeah. you know, looked it up and said, "Oh, well, thank God they don't have the video." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> he, he put out a statement and I, I read in brief here Christ is risen um, it is my faith that Jesus rose from the dead and I have never denied the reality of the empty tomb the risen Christ was not a ghost he ate and could be touched we, doubting Thomas of course but at the same time he appeared in a locked room and vanished from sight and he was often not immediately recognized. Um, so he put out a statement. In my understanding of catechism, that statement would pass ACNA catechism. That would pass Church of England catechism. That would pass Australia catechism. 
Uh, that is yeah. a pretty plain statement on a belief in the resurrected body of Christ. Yeah, look, uh, uh, 20 years ago or so, actually more than that now, I, I sat my driving license. Uh, and part of it is they, is at the end of the test in, um, in the UK, I don't know what it's like now, at the end of the test in the UK, having driven around for half an hour, he then stops and asks you uh, two or three questions from, um, from, the, uh, from the highway code, it's called. Uh, you know, stopping distances and all that kind of stuff. And, and as luck may have it, I got two or three questions that I agreed on. Uh, and so I was able to them. Uh, Reed Shepherds, again, I, I put up a blog post on this. I think this is really important that our, 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 our viewers get their head around. Read what he actually says and be clear on what he doesn't affirm. So if you walk through, if you walk through his statement, and I've done this carefully on my, on my, on my, on my piece, walk through his statement, he's very careful not to come out and say, I believe in a physical, tangible, bodily resurrection. If he wanted to put this matter to, to bed, he could have said that. Instead, what he does... Well, he no, to, to, put the, uh, to put... Hold on one second. To put it to bed, yep. he would need to repudiate the statement from uh, 2008. Yes. Instead, what you want to do, Kevin, is you want to read his today's, yesterday's statement in the mm -hmm. context of his previous framework. And I think this is really important. He made the previous statement when he was unguarded. He laid out what he thought. He was careful about it. It was you can see it's scripted. He's reading from a script. So he knew what he was saying and he and he laid it out and he and he set up this very nuanced but deliberate distinction between historical accounts and myth. That's language he uses elsewhere in, in, sure. in, 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 in this sort of category. He talked about their feelings of what happened, not not what actually happened. Uh, so he's really, really clear. He's really, really clear on that. And so then when you and so I take him at his word that that's what that's that's how he understands things. That's that's where he's being clear. Now if you read his statement in the context of that, you actually see he doesn't walk away from it. It is like when you and I, our wife comes out with a sixth dress that they put on today for the party, and you and don't, I just don't go, take me there. Don't take me there. It's beautiful. <laughs> It worked well. So they say, do I look back at this? And I'm sorry if this break, if this rings all the stereotype bells, it's meant to. It's a meme. It doesn't really, you know how this works. She says, do I look fat in this? Now, look, I, I, don't, know, I don't know what size your wife is. Uh, let's say I don't know what size yes, my you wife do. is. But okay, look. You, I, you I visited know, us. Imaginary wife. There's a boat called wrote called Bruce here in Australia. He has a wife called Sheila. Those are the typical names in Australia. Sure. Sheila comes out, and Sheila is a few pounds overweight. And Sheila says to Bruce, do I look fat in this? Now, Bruce knows there's two ways to go with this. He can just say the truth. He can just say, yeah, look, actually, you look a little bit fat in that. I love you anyway. Right? Or he can say, you look great. Right? Now, when he says, you look great, what he, what he, what he wants to be heard is, no, you don't look fat. But he's actually not, not going to say that because he's a man of integrity, or is he? So he actually yeah, tells him. He says, "I'll tell you what I think you want to hear to keep you happy, but I actually won't answer the question that you've asked me." Now, this is not silly memes. This is not silly stereotypes. This is eternal truth. This is the job of senior leaders in the church to speak the truth. Jesus said, "Let your yes be less." Any more than that comes from the evil one. So here you've got, actually, um, it looks like and it reads like, to me, like more obfuscation. He avoids the central question. He pads the language around it. But again, it's Humpty Dumpty, isn't it? A word means what I choose it to mean. And so the question is, says, empty tomb, what does he mean? When he says resurrection, when he says Christ is risen, what does he mean by that? He's already told us what he means by that. He means, uh, in their hearts, as an idea, as a concept, he does not mean he's already categorically denied a physical, bodily, tangible resurrection. I've there watched the Church of Eng I've watched the Church of England redefine abomination. Uh, I don't see them having any trouble redefining tomb, resurrection, body, ghost, or anything else. Um, well, I think it's, look. I think it's more. It's more. It's more avoidance. It's like yeah. it's just clear this is an issue. I like. Anybody with any integrity, when they read this and they see it, they, they can see. But I tell you, the number of people I'm watching where it's more important to keep the peace, it's more important to be popular, it's more important not to upset people, 
are, they're just making excuses for this. Are, I like people talk about disciplinary processes. Kevin, how did that go for you in the Episcopal Church, disciplinary processes? Bishop Pike, Bishop Spong, that dealt with all that stuff, didn't it? No, I, I mean, that's I, not, that's not, that's not a practice of the Anglican communion. You can get away with anything, including denying the resurrection, um, including marrying a partner uh, of the same sex. It's, it's okay. not that difficult anymore, and people like John can go through the system. But back to his statement, he has now answered the question enough okay. to get himself a nice year-long residency outside the Vatican in a little castle, um, and that's how it works. That's yeah, how it works. That's how it works. And, and it's an interim appointment, probably going to be a year. I don't think anybody thinks that Welby will actually uh, force this one down. Um, yeah. And I don't think anybody thinks that Shepherd will 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 stand down. Uh, it used to be the case. I, mean, I keep saying this on this show. I feel like it used to be the case when people realised that they brought an office into into some form of you know uh, controversy that they'd go, look, do you know what? I, I need to stand. I need to stand down here. Uh, even if I don't think I've done anything wrong, I just this isn't helping helping matters. Um, uh, uh, and but there's no money involved, so there's nobody that will hold money over this one. I think uh, it's not like the Oxford uh, crisis at the moment uh, um, with bishops uh, that could get really hairy uh, um, in in Oxford. Uh, this will this will go on. And uh, I look honestly when you look at who the chairman of the governors is, for example, uh, of the Anglican Centre in Rome, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's an Irish bishop who. Uh, supporter of same-sex marriage, uh, uh, publicly said, uh, advocated for voting yes to abortion in the recent Irish referendum. Uh, so they made that guy the chair of the body of governors. Um, y- y- you understand, y- you know, I read a while ago that, that disciplinary processes are helpful in as much as um, they show you either way what's going on. So when, a, when clear wrong gets disciplined, that's great. Uh, when clear wrong doesn't get disciplined, uh, that's helpful as well. That provides clarity uh, um, uh, to uh, the reality is uh, this will never go before a disciplinary process. It, it would never go through. Um, well, no, I mean, uh, Justin may well have called John and said, listen, need you to do something about this. John said, let me put a quick statement out. Justin yeah. reads the statement and said, that's fine, thanks. Whew, dodged a bullet there. And so this just goes on. It's, look, it's possible. It's possible. I just, I don't like using the word naive, but I think I have to. Because usually with these things, it's either naivety or it's something else. And so I think we have to keep saying there's naivety going on here. Uh, I, I'm not sure what else, how else you can explain what's going on here. But look, you read that statement, right, Kevin? You read it and you just went, oh, yeah. Seen this well, now, I, I think you might change your story here. I'm looking oh. over your left. I'm looking over your left shoulder. Okay, yes. I, I just looked over yes. the monitor here, and yes. that's not a sheep. Oh yeah, it is. Well, it looks like a sheep, and I'm sure it could like a sheep, but it's clearly a sheep. It couldn't be anything else. <clears throat> okay, you're the guy in the wrong here. You can't have that in your office. I've got I've got three things hanging in my office behind you there. Um, I'm going to I'm going to commit the, the, the faux pas and walk okay. away from the camera. And show you in my office. Uh, sure. You can see that right. So uh, this is um that's a sheep. That couldn't be anything else. Clearly that's a sheep, and I defy anybody to tell me <laughs> anything else. Um, this is Augustine the Ortho Duck. Do you like that? Sure, that's cute. That's Augustine the Ortho Duck. And uh, and uh, you know who this guy is. That's the guy from uh, <clears throat> Mowage. That's the guy. Let me get him off the thing. <laughs> I, I got one of these when they were doing the rounds. That's not the Princess Bride guy? That's the Princess Bride guy. Come back, Rowan. All is forgiven. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Indeed. I don't know why I ever questioned Rowan. You know, uh, in, in hindsight, in hindsight, you know. Hey brother, we keep laughing, but actually we need to keep just uh, affirming. This is this is serious stuff. Uh, we laugh, I think, almost as a defense mechanism. I think actually I sometimes laugh at the silliness of it. Uh, I laugh when I watch people try and defend this stuff. Uh, I, you just go, this is nonsense. Yeah, but you guys. I, and I have to. Agree, I agree with you here. I become very sardonic when yeah. faced with ridiculousness. Um, yes, sir. The one thing you certainly cannot deny when you put a collar on is something that so many 
thousands of people before you died for. I mean, and you should be prepared, be prepared to die for. I can't even talk. It's late here, and I see my Chinese food just arrive. I'm going to run out and get it in a second here. But um, it's a tenet of the faith. It's it, a basic The resurrection basic. of Christ ca cannot be questioned. This is so, the basic whatever. one. So I, again, I think of the lady I was with at the hospital last night, uh, riddled mm -hmm. with cancer. Uh, what's the hope that's laid out for her? Um, and uh, I know I'm banking, I'm banking with the Jesus of the Bible, uh, who, who physically appeared, manifested himself in a human body, took on, more than that, took on our humanity upon himself, uh, all of it, uh, but was without sin, was crucified, took upon himself the punishment that you and I deserve. The Bible's really clear clear about that. Uh, and then was raised physically in a body, got a, got a not resuscitated, uh, was raised, resurrected, anastasis in the Greek, uh, the great hope of the Old Testament as well, um, and took upon himself the perfection of human nature as the first fruits of who you and I uh, will one day be, and not just you and I, the whole creation. The whole creation. He will return one day to make everything new. And that is the hope that I sat down with last night with this lovely lady uh, who maybe has hours, maybe has days. That is the hope I will proclaim at her graveside when the coffin is 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 is, is lowered in. And that's the hope that I was um, uh, is under attack here. Uh, and so yeah, we smile and we laugh. Uh, it's a bit of our own defense mechanism. But this is this is this is deadly. I use that word deliberately. This is deadly serious.